How are you? Welcome to Healthy Cooking with your friendly Italians. I'm Jim Biro. And I'm Marilyn Biro. And here we are, and we're ready to talk about uh, food. We're going to go to Italy. We're going to go to the, uh, to the area of Puglia, which is in the southern part of Italy. But when we start out about talking food, i got to interject that on Friday night, Marilyn, we went up to the country club, and we had a Henry B's type of dinner. We did. And it was wonderful. The place was packed. Uh, had the best gnocchis I've, I've tasted since Henry B's closed. Mm-hmm. A beautiful steak. It was really, it really was a nice It was very evening. nice. It was, a, it was a happening. There were a lot of young people, and it was really a pleasure. It was a fun evening. Really a nice evening. And uh, so I, I wanted to mention that. Okay, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna give you some uh, some recipes right. today. We're going to give you some a recipe for a very easy ten minute pizza. Right. We're gonna ha- give you a recipe for linguine with lemon segments, which is light and very very nice. We're going to get, uh, talk about a, a, a dish called vermicelli with mushrooms and gorgonzola. And Marilyn will tell you what vermicelli is. And we're going to have ears with sausages. I'm not going to tell you what that is right now, but we're going to have ears with sausages. Okay. Stay with us, okay? Uh, but we're going to go to Puglia. And Puglia is in the he- uh, Italy heel of the boot. Uh, it's along the Adriatic. There's uh, towns there that we visited uh, Gargano, which is a yes, resort town. which yeah. was wonderful. And, and Vieste. Vieste, which we loved, which is really, a, it's, it's, it's a, like a, a going to the seashore. It's a, it's a you know. Well, they, a, and they had those high cliffs, the right, white right. cliffs, like the white cliffs of so, Dover. So it's a vacation area, yeah. summer vacation and area. And we're going to go to Bari, which is a large, uh, a large community. They have something very unique in the architecture of the Bari area, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, this area is, is a very, very, very dry and hot, but they make over a million tons, or produce more than a million tons of semolina, and they supply the semolina uh, for the rest of Italy. And the semolina is, Marilyn? Well, it's basically durum wheat, and it's really the difference between using regular wheat and durum wheat is what makes the difference in that you would have excuse me, uh, that you would have your pasta becomes al dente and can stay al dente, which means to the tooth. Without that durum wheat or semolina, be mush. It, it's very mushy. It, it never comes out. And with that durum wheat, they also uh, make breads that are out of this So semolina bread is another very, yeah. very good bread. Um, and the 50% of the olive oils that, are, that uh, supply Italy come from, from this area. Uh, and they have uh, these olive trees that line the road, and it's like going down a tunnel completely enclosed in olive trees. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, well, olive trees are beautiful anyway, because one side is sort of like a silver leaf, right. and then it turns, or if the wind blows, then you have sort of a green leaf. They're very beautiful trees. They're very narrowly, too. Very I always, narrowly. Yes. They're beautiful. They've yeah. got that <laughs> tinge of green and right. gray. Right, right. And uh, Puglia, they, they, they eat a lot of beans, a lot of fava beans, which I hate. Marilyn, well, do you like hot fava beans? Well, they have to be done extremely well <laughs> yeah, for me to like them. This is favorite. not one of my favorite things. They're and very... Lentils they have. I love lentils. And chichi or uh, beans, which are garbanzo right. beans. Right, all of those are and, very good. And then they have a thing, uh, a cardoon. Yes, now this which, is... yeah. Well, there is, it, it's somewhat like an artichoke. It is a thistle. It's in the thistle family. Again, it has to be prepared very, very well to be... Good. You, it what, can be very tough. You, you got to boil it, and then you take some egg and cheese, and you coat it, and you make a frittata right. with the cardoon, and it that's that's pretty good. That's what they, but they but they do eat a lot of boiled vegetables. There right, too. and Italians love boiled vegetables. Yeah, they they love them boiled to death. Now, uh, Jim does to a certain degree, but he's getting better. But, uh, you know, in, in the U.S., we think we should have them uh, a little. Uh, well, we should have them, yes. And the or other raw. thing is, if you boil them too much, the problem is you boil out all, all the vitamins and That's nutrients. True. So you're better off eating them a little on the raw, uh, raw side. All right, let's, let's give a recipe. All right. Let's give a recipe for a 10-minute real easy pizza. All right. So and uh, this is easy to make. 
uh, and you're going to go out and buy a pre-baked pizza crust, a uh, right. bamboi. Uh, there's a lot of them that make this. And you want the very thin, thin crust to make this in. So you're going to take... Yeah, we want to show, but this is your demonstration, too. Yes, So we're yes. going to show you how yeah, this is done. Yeah, we're going to have a done. demonstration. That's right. Yes, this is how it's, how it's going to be done. done. Yes. There we There's are, Jim in my the kitchen, kitchen. making it. Right. All right, so I'm going to heat up the olive oil in that big saute pan. And I've got that uh, pizza crust that I'm putting some rigotta cheese on. Now, you can either use whole milk rigotta or part uh, skim rigotta. Do not use uh, no, no, just plain skim rigotta because it becomes gummy, I think. Yeah, I... Uh, you, you really, in this case, I think... A whole milk rigata. Whole milk, and you're not using an awful lot of it. I think I think in this particular dish, it would be good to use the whole right. whole milk regatta. So I'm going to get this so it's uh, nice and even, uh, that regatta is nice and even on that pizza crust, which has been pre-cooked, and I put it into the saute fan. So now the bottom is going to brown up, and I've got some potatoes. And what I've done is I've blanched some potatoes, Taken them out uh, and dried them off, and mix uh, mix together some so, oil and, yes. and and some herbs and garlic powder. You can see them on the top can, of the uh, yeah. of the potatoes. So those are already the cooked. Top. So you got the rigotta, the very thinly sliced uh, uh, potatoes that I blanched. Uh, I'm using some at this time of the year. This is about the only tomato that's worth a, worth anything. It's is the, the, the plums. The plum tomatoes are good. The Again, grape, and the grape tomatoes can be good too. Yeah, they can, but they, that doesn't work out as well. No, on, on they the would be pretty thing. small to put on something right. like that. So I got got all of those covered, and then we're going to take some red onion, and again we're going to we're going to slice it real thin, and I'm using my ceramic knife to do this. Jim loves the ceramic and this is knife. A great this is knife his and, newest toy. Yeah, I don't know how long it's going to last. Well, but, it'll last for a while. Yeah, and here are the onions, and it's going to be a pretty festive-looking dish, and all all the time the bottom is is cooking. I've got this in about a medium heat. Yeah, you don't want it to get too dark. Yeah, you just, get, you know, you just you, you want to keep it a little on the crusty. I guess. Yes. I guess is what you would want to do it. And now uh, we we should uh, need to add to this uh, some herb, uh, some uh, oregano. There's the there's some oregano that I've got in. The, dry dried oregano taste has a better taste to it than fresh oregano. Well, I think it depends. If you're doing it like this on a pizza, I think the dried oregano. I think if you're going to do something in a cooked dish, the oregano is very nice to have a fresh. Now, so. as once in a while, Marilyn and I very well, very seldom, we disagree. We don't always agree, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> that's what makes the world go round. And I've got some, uh, some grated cheese. This is a pecorino. That uh, that I I put over the top, and uh, and then uh, we'll just drizzle this with a little olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Jim is always putting olive oil. I which don't is own good. olive oil that is an extra virgin. Right. Okay. Now we got a we got an oven at about four four uh, four twenty five, and we're gonna uh, leave that in there. And uh, no, I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna broil this. That's what I'm gonna. I'm gonna broil that. All right, you broiled it. I okay. broiled it. Yeah, and there, it's wouldn't. nice and brown on the top, and it's ready to eat. So that's and a really quick dinner with a good salad. You have a wonderful meal. It's vegetarian. Yep. Uh, I think they have uh, gluten-free uh, pizza. I would imagine you can find them at certain places if you were gl gluten intolerant. Yeah, and you try to get the thin ones. And you can also, instead of using this, you could use naan or pita bread and do right. the same There's thing. Right, there's all kinds it. of things you can do. So uh, there is our, our first dish. And to finish it off, I need a glass of wine, and I've got my little aerator uh, to... Uh, to make sure that you're... Red wine uh, tastes. That's the best part of the whole thing, right there. Right. So that makes a very nice dinner. That's an and it's an easy one. It is an easy dinner. So let's let's talk a little bit more about. Uh, we'll interject as we go about okay. uh, about Puglia. Uh, we stayed in a place called Gargano, which is an Italian resort area uh, along the Adriatic, 
And then we would go off on trips, and we would go on down to Vieste, and we talked about the White Cliffs. In Vieste, uh, they, were Vieste. Very, they were very beautiful. And we went into the old town with our car, and we actually got our car stuck. Well, we couldn't go any further, and Jim had gone up quite a ways, and he had to back back down, <laughs> back down this. It was a... It was a hill going up. Yeah, and the, and the uh, Italians are trying to help me, give me directions. And I, <laughs> and I don't speak Italian that well. So, But anyways, they were trying to help. And we had, I remember, Marilyn, remember we had a lunch there at a wonderful trattoria. Uh, it's called Trattoria da Mimo. Yes. That was absolutely wonderful and is considered one of the better better right. restaurants uh, in that area. So you're getting a chance to go there. Trattoria da uh, Mimo. And uh, you will thoroughly enjoy that. Um, let's go on to another recipe. All right. Let's go on to this is this is sort of a different recipe recipe that is very light, but uh, I think you'll like it because you're going to use lemon. Usually we use lemon juice, lemon but zest. But you're using mostly all of the lemon on this. I'm it's taking in def different forms. Yeah, we're going to take uh, this is called uh, linguine with lemon. Uh -huh. And you're going to take uh, two lemons, and you're going to zest them. Make sure they're ni nice and clean. And then you're going to take the juice and out of those two lemons and squeeze it. Set that aside. Then you're going to cut up two more lemons and cut cut up, cut off the pith. And the, the pith is the white part. I'm glad I said that right. And <laughs> the skin. And you're going to cut in between the membranes so that you get the sections you're out of the You're only taking sections. All right, you're yes. going to put that, and you're going to uh, uh, put that with the lemon juice and lemon, and put a, a, a good healthy amount of black pepper, freshly ground pep, black pepper. Set that aside. Cook up uh, a one pound of uh, linguine, uh, more than just al dente, because you're going to finish it off, yes, as we always do, the, in the, the pan. The two wonderful things about pasta that you should always remember is to use some pasta water because the starch <coughs> makes the sauce so stick to the pasta and that you do cook it <coughs> less than al dente because you're going to put it back in the sauce and that will cook it a little bit more. And so after that's cooked, you gotta, you're going to save a half, a half a cup of the pasta water and you're going to heat six tablespoons of olive oil, put four tablespoons of unsalted butter, add the lemon zest and lemon juice, right. and the uh, and the and then add the pasta and the pasta water, water. and mm -hmm. then add your uh, sections of uh, of lemon sections in there. Add a half a cup of Parmesan cheese, and, you'll and uh, serve yeah. it with some uh, with a little drizzle of olive oil, some more cheese if you'd like. And I, I think you're going to find it a very very interesting dish, mostly as the weather gets warmer. Warmer, that's this something that you would a, like. A, yeah, yes. it's a spring yes. type we, of dish. We, we're not ready for fresh tomatoes yet uh, for that kind of thing of using a fresh tomato sauce. So the lemon would be very good. And we've, we, I don't know, you, you can take this, and instead of going through the, all this trouble, you can make it a lot simpler by just taking some lemon zest and some lemon juice, olive oil, garlic, right. and parsley. Right, and. That's a real quick uh, right. pasta dish that uh, is served in a lot of restaurants. It, again, it's just making this recipe your, your own and, well, and putting sure. your own spin on it and right. what's, what's easy for you. So now let's, let's go, back to, go back over to Puglia. We're going back to Puglia, okay. For one more shot. All right. Uh, <laughs> and let's talk about uh, Bari, which is Bari, a big yes. port town in Greece. They have a wonderful cathedral there called the Basilica of St. Nicholas is absolutely fantastic. Make a lot of wine in the area. and it, The wine tends to be very strong, I think probably because of the, the weather. The being, weather being you know, warm and sunny, yes. So what they do in Bari is they, they have places that they bring in wine from other places, which are lighter wine, and they, they blend, blend them. them. And, and actually they're doing that even around here that you'll see, you'll see different grapes put together like the Sangiovese or, or I mean you can read about them and the, you'll see a blend of about three different grapes and it, they're becoming very interesting wines. Right and right near there is called is a city of Trulli. Yes. Which is a very unique place. They have these houses that are cone shaped. Right. And the outside is all stucco. It looks like a 
a Moorish type of influence, and the Moors did conquer this uh, many, this many years This ago. area, yes. And the, uh, the outside is sun bleached, and there's no windows in the place. Right. And the reason there's no <laughs> windows is back when they were built, uh, they taxes were based on how many windows you had in the house. Right. And if you had no windows, you didn't have and any you taxes. Didn't get, you didn't get taxed. And the Italians are very good at figuring out the system. <laughs> I mean, even to, to today, if you try to, uh, you know, build anything in Italy, it, it becomes extremely difficult. And then how you get around the system right. is, is, you know. And they have a hotel there called the Hotel Truly, that you can stay there. You can also stay in and one of these houses. Uh, houses. And it's, I don't know. I would have a little trouble without windows. I think. Well, but I think I think what they've done on some of them, they put windows. They in have put windows in now. Well, probably. <laughs> <laughs> if they're but, going to get people there, they might need to do that. But it's a place where you where you go to stop the world. And you want to get off. Very peaceful. Very quiet. No cars. Really great. Great spot. It's an area of Italy that not very many people go to. And it is exquisite, and you should try to try to go there if, right. if at all possible. It's off the beaten track, but it's a wonderful, wonderful area. So let us talk about a dish that uh, I got from Marilyn's uh, well, family. The, well, PNR used to have a cookbook at one time, I guess. I uh, somehow in my life it's disappeared. But visiting Norma, our cousin, my cousin. We found the old PNR <laughs> cookbook, right? She right. showed it to you. So here, Jim found this recipe from there. It's called vermicelli with mushrooms and gorgonzola. It's a, uh, and uh, the gorgonzola is a is a is a type of blue cheese. It is, oh, but it's, it's it's a little bit more creamier? creamy, I right. think, than than what you consider a blue cheese in a blue cheese dressing. Now, Marilyn. Some people don't know what well, vermicelli. vermicelli was a very fine, fine, thin, thin, uh, thinner thin. than spaghetti, and it, it sort of maybe even came in a nest or whatever. I mean, it was very, very thin and cooked very quickly. And they would push this through at PNR a dye uh, that it was made the out of brass. The dye was made out of brass, and they still. This is still done today. We went over to uh, see. The Varilla Company, although I think they make them out of plastic today, but these were huge dyes. I mean, these would be like almost like a tabletop, and that's what the pasta would be pushed through. That's the shapes, and and it was the dye was meant to make a shape, whether it be orchette or rigatoni right. or you know whatever penne. You know that particular dye. That day, they would be making just that particular pasta and pushing it through and that every, particular dye. And every morning, they when they're ready to get, go to work, they would open up the tunnel to the prison. No, and no, 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 they, no. They, they no. got their workers from there. No, no, they oh. did not. Most of the workers at PNR were Italian immigrants. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> All right. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about ears. Ears. That's orecchiette is the correct pronunciation, they look and that's like ears. what it means is little ears. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is a simple dish to make. Basically, you're making a pork, almost like a pork uh, sausage patty, right. uh, pa patty, and then you're going to break it up and you're going to put some mushrooms and cream in it. Uh. And it's uh, called orecchiette, and then and it, it has a, a name from an area down there called Norsina. And you're going to take a, a pound of ground pork and put some salt and pepper in it, some baking soda, which sort of makes... It's unusual. Yeah, it's unusual. And some garlic powder and some dried rosemary and some grated nutmeg. And make sure you get f m nutmeg that you grate yourself. Yes, not that makes a big difference. The other stuff it is really you does. don't even put it in, right? Right. And then you're going to uh, let that set for 10 minutes, make it into a pan, brown it off and set it aside, let it cool, and cut it into chucks, okay? And then you're going to take uh, uh, one pound of uh, cremini mushrooms. Cremini mushrooms are nothing more than brown mushrooms. Okay? Well, and they're, they're basically a small portobello. I yes. mean, everybody talks about portobello, but the cremini or the brown mushroom, the little mushroom cap, is nothing more than the baby portobello. So you're going to slice those up, saute them in a little olive oil, add to that uh, a half a cup of white wine, half a cup of cream, add the sausage chunks. Boy, this is sounding good. 
Wait, wait, anything with sausage right. for you and sounds cream. good. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the uh, pasta and the pasta water. Put some uh, grated pecorino mm. in there, a juice of a lemon, some parsley, there stir it up. And you have got a dish to die for. It's wonderful. And you can tell people, I eat ears, right? There you go. Uh, you can also, if you want to intensify the flavor, you can take uh, some dry porcini mushrooms. That, that you always helps, it. too. And with the water, you can put, yeah. the, you can put shiitake the, mushrooms in. Right, right. Uh, the dry shiitake. The dry Both mushrooms. of them work out extremely now, well. Now, all these recipes are on uh, our show and you have all these recipes at the end of the show, and that's uh, fingerlakes1.com. That's right. So, so those are the recipes. We got. We want to tell you about some things that are happening uh, uh, here in the area uh, this next couple of weeks. Uh, you all probably know Ralph Santacropi, uh, and uh, he's a very fine, fine musician. And at the party house, well, uh, 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 Clam Man's Party House. I think it's got a chain. Change of names, anyway. Uh, he is playing there. Uh, that's tonight. That's tonight. Uh, I think there's a $10 buffet and music yeah. and dancing and whatever. And food and the whole nine yards. Right. So you might want to look into that. And then uh, Finger Lakes Distillery, uh, which is on 414, is having a Kentucky Derby party on May 3rd with cocktails, food, and music, and that's for $30. Then okay. the following week, uh, Three Brothers Winery is having a Woman in Wine Festival. There Marilyn you go. always likes that. There you go. And uh, uh, Mother's Day is coming up, and I talked to Marilyn today about doing this at Sonnenberg Gardens. They're going to have tea. High tea. High tea. How about that? And uh, but that's I, a beautiful spot. But I do want to mention that we're also having a book signing on May 6th at the Gould with Jill Tejan, who is the president of the National Women's Hall of Fame. She's written a book called Her Story, which gives a little vignette about all the women, a lot of different women that have broke the, broken the glass ceiling or have made uh, uh, very significant contributions to the, uh, to the world. Her speech will be called Groundbreaking Women, which should be, be very interesting. You can buy the book. You can have it signed. You can just come and listen to her stories about these groundbreaking women because the next day, there will be a groundbreaking at the mill for the new home of the National Women's Hall of Fame. And that's why she's in town. A she's long from, time coming, baby. Right, she's, she's, from, <coughs> she's from Colorado. So she will be here for about three or four days. She's doing some very interesting things. Actually, at the studio, she's also going to be doing a program uh, which we which goes on Google Culture about Mother's Day, which would be then uh, sent out for Mother's Day. So she's doing some very interesting things. So whether we realize it or not, as we look outside, spring has sprung. At least there's more activities going on, and hopefully one of these days, uh, weather will warm up and. We'll, but we, uh, we need to get out and enjoy some of the wonderful things that happen here in the Finger Lakes. You've got to be proud of living here in the Finger Lakes, a great area. And uh, things are going to start to happen here. And uh, so um, I also want to say hello and thank you to a woman. Uh, Marilyn went to school with her at, at, at Auburn. Yes, we Janet, graduated from uh, East High Fox. School together. She yes. lives in Chicago. <laughs> she sent me a recipe from a restaurant there. Uh, for a roast chicken, a simple roast chicken that I did. It was absolutely he wonderful. He tried it. So now you're going to give them that recipe eventually. I'm right? going to give them that recipe. The, it the, was very the, good. We and had it's really, it the other the night. whole secret to it is cooking it in the oven at a high temperature. But we're going right. to we're going to give you that recipe. Right. So the next time we are actually going to get on that ferry from Bari and go, and we're going to go to Mykonos. Right. And Mykonos is this wonderful little island that during the day is sleepy and quiet. At night, all hell breaks loose. But it's a Greek island, one and, of the Greek islands. And so we're going to go there. We're going to give you some of the foods from uh, from Greece and Mykonos and go on to the mainland. So uh, we're looking forward uh, to uh, to going over to Greece for a while. And then we'll come home. We'll stay home after that for a right. while. Right. So in the next couple of weeks, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. 
And uh, take advantage of living in this wonderful area and bet. take advantage of some of these wonderful things that are happening. God bless. Ciao. Ciao.